Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemi Ve salatu ve selam Ala Resulü Kerim Ve ala ahli ve sahabi ve sellim All praises and adoration are due to Almighty Allah I ask Allah to bless the soul of Prophet Muhammed Sallallahu Aleyhi ve sellem His household, his companion And the generality of Muslim Ummah To the day of accountability, amin This is another topic In the series of our topics In this uh, third term, at CTY Model College, Ibadan State, Nigeria, this lesson is SS2 Chemistry work for week eight. So this is the first part of the lesson, which is lesson uh, one. So actually, the note here is for lesson one and two. It was presented by Mr. Ojekunle Ridwan and uh, Master Abdulatif Monsou. The topic we hear before me is uh, sulfur and its compounds. Sulfur has been known since time immemorial for its medicinal value and germicidal effect. Sulfur, as it is, its chemical nature was not known until 1787 when Anthony Lavoisier recognized it as an element. It is the 16th element on the periodic table belonging to group 6 and has 6 valence electrons, like oxygen atom. Sulfur occurs freely in the earth crust and in its combined state as sulfites and as tetraoxosulfate 6. Moving forward, how can sulfur be extracted? This will take us to extraction of uh, sulfur. Most of the world sulfur is obtained by a process known as a fresh process. How is that one done? A sulfur pump is made. Having made the pump, we now make a hole of about 30 cm in diameter that will be dug or drilled through the what to the layers of the world of the heart to the sulfur bed where the sulfur is located in the heart crust then this sulfur pump that is made up of three constructive steel pipes is then driven down the hole that is about 30 centimeter in diameter then what follows superheated water at about 170 degrees celsius and 10 atmosphere pressure is forced through the outermost tube to the sulfur bed so as to make sure that the sulfur is melted. The melting point of sulfur is about 115 degrees Celsius at this time. Hot compressed air at a pressure of 15 atmosphere is then blown down the innermost tube to force the molten sulfur up through the middle tube. The molten sulfur is continuously pumped into a receptacle at the surface where it is allowed to solidify a large tank. Employing this process, the sulfur obtained is about 99.5% pure. If it happens I want to get sulfur from natural gas, the hydrogen sulfide that is present in natural gas is first separated out and then oxidized to sulfur by mixing it with hair and passing it over a heated aluminum oxide catalyst. The diagram you are seeing here, it illustrates what we have just discussed. discussed. This is a pipe that is three constructive concentric, a kind of three concentric layer pipe. So, as we have just explained, that we have this outermost pipe here through which we force what we force a water that is very hot at about 170 degrees Celsius. The left hand side here, the water goes down to the sulfur bed, then it melts it, then out compressed here from the middle part is made to pass to the layer then it forced up the sulfur that is that has been that melted in the world in the sulfur deposit that we have here then the molten sulfur here then goes up and gets out from another pipe that is part of the concentric uh, pipes that has been made now another thing is that look at looking at this if you want to get it from a from a petroleum product so like we have said the natural gas so we have the hydrogen sulfide from the natural gas reacting with oxygen then giving us 2H2O plus the sulfur is then deposited. 
allotrope of sulfur. Sulfur can, you, can exist in form of crystalline sulfur, rhombic sulfur that is also known as alpha. Uh, uh, we have it uh, the crystalline sulfur, it is the alpha sulfur, while the rhombic sulfur. No, we have crystalline sulfur. Crystalline sulfur is divided into two. We have it as rhombic and monoclinic. The rhombic one is what we call the alpha one. While the monoclinic is, or the prismatic one is what we call the beta sulfur. The second allotrope of sulfur is amorphous sulfur, data sulfur. While the third, but at times may not be regarded as an allotrope, is the plastic sulfur. Now, how does a rhombic sulfur look like? This form of sulfur is. This form of fossil oil is the only stable allotrope at temperature below 90 degrees Celsius. Crystals of rhombic sulfur are bright yellow and octahedra. They are made up of S8 molecules. Each S8 molecule consists of a ring of A8 atoms. Monoclinic sulfur. This form of sulfur is stable at temperature between 96 degrees Celsius and 119 degrees Celsius. The crystal are long, thin, and needle-shaped, and it consists of a, a, a S8 molecules as well, the polyhydric molecule. Now, polyatomic molecule rather. At temperature of the room, that is the room temperature, they slowly revert to rhombic sulfur crystals, so it is less dense than rhombic sulfur. You can have interconversion between monoclinic and rhombic sulfur. Yes, the following relationship exists between rhombic and monoclinic sulfur as we have here. Rhombic can change to monoclinic at between 96 degrees Celsius and 119 degrees Celsius. The monoclinic can change back to rhombic at a temperature below 96 degrees Celsius. Now, the second uh, allotrope, amorphous sulfur. This allotrope has no regular crystalline shape. It is prepared as a pale yellow, almost white deposit. When hydrogen sulfide is bubbled through water for a long time and the saturated solution is exposed to here. It is also deposited in chemical reactions as this uh, equation that we have mentioned before follows. The action of hydrogen sulfide with air can lead to the deposition of sulfur. The third, plastic sulfur. It is cooled. It is a cooled or super cooled form of sulfur. If yellow sulfur is heated and poured into cold water, it will roll up into yellow ribbons, which look as if they are made up of plastic material. So this soft and elastic material is what we call the plastic sulfur and it will not dissolve in carbon four sulfide. It's unstable. It can be easily reverted to rhombic sulfur when it's least, when it is left on sanding. Hence at times it may not be considered as a true allotrope of sulfur. So that is why in the question it may be asked which of the following may not be regarded as a true allotrope that is the plastic uh, sulfur. Moving forward that the physical properties of sulfur. Number one it is a yellow solid which exists as amorphous and crystalline substance. It is insoluble in water, but soluble in carbon four sulfide and methyl benzene, that is toluene. It is a bad conductor of heat and electricity. It has a melting point of 119 degrees Celsius and a boiling point of 44 degrees Celsius. The density depends on allotropic form. Chemical reaction or chemical properties. Sulfur can undergo direct combination with other elements, with metals. Iron can react with sulfur forming iron 2 sulfide. Copper can react with sulfur to form copper 2 sulfide or copper 1 sulfide. Now, with oxygen, with oxygen, sulfur burns with a flame to form sulfur oxide, and a small amount of sulfur cyanide can also be formed there. As you can see, O2 plus S giving another so 2 With hydrogen, sulfur can bond in hydrogen, forming hydrogen sulfide. With carbon, sulfur can bond in carbon to form carbon disulfide. With other non-metals, sulfur combines with other non-metals to form various sulfides. E.g., e tetraphosphorus trisulfide, that is P4S3, disulfur dichloride, S2Cl2, and sulfur hexachloride, SF6. Action of oxidizing acid on sulfur. Sulfur is readily oxidized when warmed with concentrated tetrasulfuric acid to form sulfur 4 oxide. The acid itself is reduced to sulfur 4 oxide when warmed with concentrated triazonated 5 acid using bromine as a catalyst. 
So point is oxidized to the result of a 6 acid when you use bromine as a catalyst, as you have in this uh, equation. The first one, sulfur reacting with H2SO4, we are going to have sulfur 4 oxide with H2O. Sulfur reacting with HNO3 in the presence of bromine as a catalyst, you are going to have H2SO4 formed and uh, you are going to have your NO2 being released. Now, these are some of the reactions of uh, sulfur when it reacts with oxidizing acids. Action of hot concentrated alkalis. How do they behave with uh, sulfur? Sulfur will react with hot concentrated alkaline solution to form a mixture of sulfites and trioxosulfate 4, which in the presence of excess sulfur reacts to form a polysulfide and a trioxothiosulfate 6, respectively. That is when you have a uh, sulfur reaction with concentrated hot concentrated alkalis. Moving forward, what can you use sulfur for? It is used to produce sulfur 4 oxide for manufacturing tetraisomacis acid. Sulfur is used in the fulcanization of rubber. Sulfur and some of its products are used as fungicides and insecticides for spraying crops. It is used to manufacture the bleaching agents used in the pulp and paper industry. Sulfur sulfides. It is used for proportion of sulfides. These sulfides are used in manufacturing matches, fireworks, and gun powder. Moving forward. Another aspect we are going to look at is hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide is one of the compounds of sulfur. How is it prepared? How is it produced? This hydrogen sulfide, what can we say about it? Hydrogen sulfide is a compound of sulfur found in volcanic gases. Sulfur springs, coal gas and gases formed during the decay of uh, organic matter containing sulfur. It is required both in the laboratory and commercially by the action of a dilute acid on the metallic sulfide, like iron 2 sulfide. So, if you want to prepare hydrogen sulfide now, so HCl plus FeS can give us FeCl2 plus H2S. So, that is the action of acid on uh, iron 2 sulfide, like acid like HCl or H2S before can also give us iron 2 sulfide. Then, in the laboratory, if you need frequent production of the grass, and some other gases like uh, carbon four sulfide. You can use keep apparatus. This diagram here is showing keep apparatus at the right hand side. This is how it looks like. Then if you now fill it with chemicals, with reagents, if you want to prepare your H2S, so you put dilute acid up here, be it HCl, H2S, so far. Then you have your ion two sulfide loaded at the middle part of the keep apparatus, like FES as you can see here. Then when you release the dilute acid, so there will be a reaction between FES and H2S within the you can open up the tap here, the H2S can be released. The same principle is for if you want to make it to produce a carbon 4 oxide. What are the physical properties of hydrogen sulfide? It's colorless gas with a repulsive smell like that of a rotten air. It's poisonous and burns with a pale flame. It is about 1.18 times denser than here and moderately soluble in water. Chemical reactions or chemical properties. As an acid, hydrogen sulfide ionizes slightly in water to form a weak diabetic acid, which exhibits typical acidic properties as follows. We know acids can ionize, so H2S can ionize in water to produce hydrosomon ion and another water molecule be formed there. As you can see, H3O plus 2H2O. Then, for the ionization of the substance that is the h2s minus so can i lead to the production of h3o plus x2 minus moving forward ionization above is reversible we should take note of that apart from ionization as an acid h2s can react with the base so when it starts with naoh as a base what does it form? It forms Na2S, that is sodium sulfide, plus what? Plus uh, 2H2O. That is when it reacts with what? With a base. As a precipitating agent, to make some uh, thing, some compounds be, to be deposited in form of a precipitate, this is a lead ethanoid reacting with a uh, hydrogen sulfide, you are going to have lead 2 sulfide 
and you are going to have the ethanoic acid being released. So you are precipitated lead two sulfide with the help of what? With the help of uh, hydrogen sulfide. Then zinc sulfate reacting with hydrogen sulfide can also give us zinc sulfide plus H2SO4. So this one is a, is, is a blackish uh, compound. It's, a, it's whitish. PBS is black, white ZNS is white. Paints often change color because of the reaction of a metallic pigment with the hydrogen sulfide in the surrounding here. Reaction with oxygen. Hydrogen sulfide can react with oxygen to give us 2H2O plus 2SO2. That is, if you supply excess air to hydrogen sulfide, it burns to give us sulfur 4 oxide. But if the supply of oxygen is limited, you're going to have sulfur being deposited. Sulfur being deposited. So as a reducing agent, hydrogen sulfide reacts with strong oxidizing agent like KMnO4 when they are acidified, as in the case of the reaction in the Roman figure 1 here, KMnO4 plus H2SO4 and H2S. So it can reduce oxidizing agents. So then chlorine or soil is, 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 is an oxidizing agent. If it reacts with hydrogen sulfide, hydrogen sulfide makes it to be reduced. They are going to have a uh, sulfur being deposited. Then sulfur oxide reacting with uh, H2S as well can lead to deposition of sulfur. How do you test for hydrogen sulfide? First and foremost, if you don't know a gas, a gas with a repulsive smell like that of rotten egg is probably hydrogen sulfide, which can be confirmed as follows. Number one, if you have a moist thin piece of filter paper with lead 2 triodonitrate 5 solution and drop it into a gas jar of, of the unknown gas. If the gas is hydrogen sulfide, the paper turns black due to the formation of lead 2 sulfide. Lead 2 ethanol 2, it gives the same reaction that we have explained there. So, lead nitrate, reacting with hydrogen sulfide, you're going to have lead 2 sulfide and HNO3 will be produced. So, the blackish thing you are seeing here is giving a positive test. If you have another thing here, so it, it is not what is not hydrogen sulfide that is present in such, a, in such a, a solution. This diagram is giving us that fact. So the blackish thing here is showing the positive reaction, a positive test for hydrogen uh, sulfide. So what, are we, what can we use hydrogen sulfide for? Basically, it is used in the analysis of ores. We want to analyze ores of certain metals. So we can use uh, hydrogen sulfide to do the analysis. Basically, it is used in the quantitative. Like we say that it is normally used in what in the qualitative uh, qualitative analysis. Yes, it is basically used in the qualitative. Uh, that's why we want to discuss about this hydrogen sulfide. We say hydrogen sulfide is used in the analysis of all of metals. It is possible to separate groups of metals from one another. How do you do that? From one another because their sulfides have different solubilities in acids and alkalis. So the price of a certain metals. A certain metal is often indicated by the color of the water of its sulfide. So if you react hydrogen sulfide with a particular metal, they want to know uh, if it's present in a particular salt or not. So using hydrogen sulfide can actually help us to determine the kind of what the kind of a uh, metal that are present in a particular or in a particular ore. So this is where I will stop. We shall continue from sulfide discussing sulfides, other sulfides, basically. When we uh, get to the next lesson, I pray Allah will to the understanding of what we have discussed so far. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.